All right. Well, uh, happy Monday, everybody. And uh, it is week six, and we are um, continuing right along here. Um, so, uh, so now we will take a look at um, some classification uh, algorithms. So in our textbook, we're going to um, skip a couple of chapters. There's kind of like the Bayesian approach to um, machine learning is what, uh, what the textbook calls it. And, uh, and that's fine. I think uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of kind of Bayesian approaches and Bayesian methods as well, but um, I cover that in 102C. And so, um, so we're not gonna bother uh, with that. But um, as far as today's lecture goes, we'll, um, and this week, we're gonna get into kind of classification methods, classification algorithms, and today we're going to look at the Bayes classifier. And the, um, the Bayes classifier uses Bayes theorem, but it is not a Bayesian method, okay? So, you know, Bayesian statistics is all about, well, I don't know about all about, but in Bayesian statistics, kind of a central idea is the, the idea that you have a prior distribution, your unknown parameters are treated as random variables. Um, and, uh, you know, and that's different from what we're doing today. Today, we're using Bayes' theorem, and we're going to calculate basically um, a probability um, of some kind of, uh, of basically, uh, you know, what class an object belongs to. But it's not, um, I would say it's not a Bayesian method. Okay, so, um, so I'm going to use the notation that comes from our textbook, okay, uh, chapter five in our textbook of first course in machine learning. And, um, and so this is the notation that, uh, that our textbook uses. You know, um, not everybody follows this exact same notation, but kind of the general idea still remains the same, right? And the idea here is you have um, N objects, okay? And each of your N objects um, have, have data in D dimensions, okay? And each of those objects have some kind of class label, right? It's in group A, group B, group C, or whatever it is, okay? And that class label is kind of our, our target label that this is what we want to predict for future observations, okay? And, uh, and that's, that's what we have here, okay? And so, you know, we have a total of C different class labels, okay? So um, our, our label can go anywhere from one, one through C, okay? And what we want to do is we want to predict the class label for some new object that we haven't seen before. That's going to be X new. Okay. And, uh, and again, these are class labels. And so even though they are numbers like one, two, three, up through C, they are not, they do not have numeric meaning. Okay. Uh, we have to treat them as categories. And so, you know, if you see class label two, that's not, it's not something that's twice as big as class label one. And it's not meaningful to predict any kind of value such as class label 2.5 or class label, you know, something else, right? And, and so, you know, kind of like when we, you're trying to predict the, um, what number is written, you know, the handwritten number, it's, it's not useful to try to predict that, you know, the number, the digit that was written was 3.5 or something. It's either, it's either a three, or a five or a four or something, you know, it's not, it's not something in between, okay? Um, the Bayes classifier that we're going to use is, um, you know, come, I'm sorry, it uses Bayes rule, right? So Bayes rule, um, you know, is the, the probability of, you know, A given B is equal to, you know, B given A times the probability of A divided by the probability of B and et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's a probabilistic classifier. Okay, the, what it spits back is going to be a number between zero and one, which is a probability. And basically, um, if you have, say, three possible categories, category A, category B, and category C, you're going to get back three um, decimal values that, if you add them up, should add up to one. So, you, you know, for example, you might get 19% category A, 80% category B, 1% category C, okay? And you'd say, you know, the, the most probable class is class B, but we acknowledge that there's a there's a still a probability that it could be A and it's not impossible to be C or something like that, okay? Um, we're not gonna cover logistic regression in this class, but that's also another probabilistic classifier. 
as in it spits out a value between zero and one that kind of indicates the probability that it belongs to something, okay? Um, there's other probabilistic, I mean, there's other classifiers that are non-probabilistic or hard classifiers. And, uh, and we'll take a look at uh, some of these. Uh, you, you got K nearest neighbors, you have support vector machines, and they kind of either just say it's this class category or that classification or something like that, okay? And again, this is not a Bayesian statistics thing. Okay, so this is your um, old, um, uh, you know, from 100A, you know, your base theorem, probability of A given B is the probability of B given A times the probability of A divided by the probability of B, okay? This, uh, the numerator is the same thing as the probability of B intersect A or B and A, okay? And then the denominator, probability of B, you know, it can be decomposed into basically uh, the numerator summed across all possible values of A, right? So um, whatever A is, if you consider every single possible case of A and you, um, you sum it or you integrate it, if A is continuous, then you would get uh, the probability of, of B, right? So um, I, you might have heard that, the, you know, if you integrate out one of the variables, if you have the, prob you know, the joint probability of probability of B and A, you can integrate out A or you can sum across all A and you'll get the probability of B uh, in the denominator. All right, the, the, we're just starting off with a bunch of notation. I think a lot of this will make a little bit more sense with some examples here, okay? And, uh, and this is what we want to be able to do with our Bayes classifier is we wanna predict the class of some new observations. So you have some new input values, X new, okay? Some vector of, of values that come in. And based on what you have in this new observation X new, and basically based on all of your training data, which is big X, all of your training input values and all of the labels for your training data, which is um, this vector T, based on that, you wanna predict what is the probability that the class is class C? What's the, pro you know, based on these, the input values in X new, what's the probability that it belongs to category A? Or what's the probability it belongs to category B? Or what's the probability it belongs to category C? And that's what we wanna do. We wanna predict that probability, okay? And, and so, you know, all of the, because it's a probability, all of your, your rules of probability apply in that this number has to be between zero and one. And so that's a very easy, um, giveaway that you've done something wrong if you've done a calculation and you get a number that's greater than one, okay? And, and sometimes it happens or you get a negative number, you know right away you've done something wrong, okay? And, um, and also, if you calculate this value for every possible um, classification, then all the, the sum of those probabilities have to add up to one, right? So if you get probability um, class A, class B, and class C, and you add up those probabilities, they must add up to one, okay? Otherwise, you're either missing a um, classification category or, again, you've made some kind of mistake. Okay, so if we apply Bayes' rule and we apply it to the thing that we're looking for, you know, the probability that the, the unknown class label is equal to some particular uh, category, okay? We can apply it to Bayes' rule, and so you have T nu equals C is equal to the prob uh, given X nu is the probability of X nu given that T nu equals C, multiplied by the probability that T nu equals C divided by the probability of X nu. In all of these things, um, you have a given XT, meaning basically based given your training data, based on the training data that we've given the model, you know, what's, what's all of this stuff, okay? And so um, I'm gonna use the words, keywords that kind of come you know, that we use in Bayesian statistics, again, not a Bayesian model here, but um, the thing that we're looking for is what we call the posterior. This is the probability of what we wanna find. And this is gonna be found by taking, you know, this is basically the probability A given B. We're gonna do this by finding the probability of B given A. And this is the probability of observing the values inside this vector X nu, given, or if we assume, 
that it belongs to a specific class, okay? So, um, you know, what's the probability that the object we've observed, you know, belongs to class A if the value is say five is gonna be based on, uh, you know, some calculation where we say, well, if it belongs to class A, what's the probability that, that we would see the value five, okay? And so we're gonna have to calculate that, okay? And then there's a prior probability, which is going to start off with, you know, well, what, you know, if we didn't know anything else about the data, what's the probability that it belongs to, say, category A in the first place? And then the marginal is just, what's the probability of observing this value five or whatever it is, regardless of the class label? Okay. There's a bunch of stuff on this slide, and uh, and I want to put it all on one slide for your reference, uh, which, which I think will be good. For, uh, you know, as you study in the future. Um, but I, again, I think all of this will be a little bit better with, um, with some examples here, okay? This denominator is often a challenge to calculate, okay? But, um, but it can be done by applying the law of total probability, all right? And so, you know, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, you know, if we calculate the numerator, okay? The calculate the numerator is basically the probability of x nu and t nu equals c, okay, rather than x nu given times the probability of t nu equals c, is going to be x nu and get t nu equals c. And if we calculate it across all possible values of what t nu could be, all possible values of c, then, um, then that would give you the denominator, okay? And so the, if you sum the numerator across all possible classes, you're going to get our denominator. And so the numerator across all possible classes is written this in that we're going to sum basically the numerator across every single thing that C could be. And that's going to be C prime goes from one to big C. All right. Um, let, let's do our example. I, hopefully that it will be a little bit more digestible than, than all of these formulas. Maybe these formulas are just fine. Um, and you know, uh, but but we'll do the example. Let me give you your first view quiz answer today. First view quiz answer today is the letter D. D as in dog. D as in dog is your first view quiz answer for today. Okay, so our example is we're gonna say you know let's say you're gonna purchase a pouch, and these pouches are filled with red and blue marbles. Okay. And you go online and you order, you say, I want 25 pouches of marbles uh, from some company. <laughs> okay. I don't, I don't know who sells marbles online. But anyway, you do this and they arrive and you say, oh, you know what? I guess they have some kind of serial number on it. And you say, oh, you know what? The pouches are filled at three different factories. And maybe these three factories have, you know, they, they fill the pouches with different proportions of red and blue marbles, okay? And so, um, so you know, factory A maybe is like 50% red, 50% blue. Factory B does like 70% red. Factory C maybe does 30% red. We don't know yet, okay? We're, we have no idea what, what's happening at the factories, okay? We also, um, we don't really know the output of each of these factories, okay? So everything's going to have to be based off of the data that we receive, okay? And so, you know, 24 of our pouches are labeled with their factories. And then we have mystery pouch number 25, okay? And so um, we count them up and we say, you know, in our data, half of our bags, 12, 12 out of the 24 came from factory A, six come from factory B, and six come from factory C, okay? And then the last one isn't labeled and we wanna to try to guess, all right, where, where did this pouch come from? Did it come from factory A, B, or C? Um, we're going to assume that uh, the bags are filled via like some binomial Bernoulli process that, that each marble that ends in the bag is, um, is random. Okay, so this is going to be our training day. We got, you know, 25 different pouches of marbles and, um, and we've got our test case. Okay. All right. And so um, we take the time and we're going to go and we're going to kind of count all of the red marbles and all of the blue marbles. And, uh, and this is what we end up getting, okay? So we look at all 12 pouches that came from factory A and after 
tallying up how many red and blue marbles we have, we find that 60% of the marbles are red, 40% are blue for factory A. Okay, factory B, we end up getting 50% red and 50% blue. And for factory C, 40% of the marbles are red and 60% are blue, right? So each of these coming from the different factories, we're getting slightly different um, filling proportions. Okay, and, and again, we don't work at the factories. We don't know exactly, you know, is factory A really doing 60% red and 40% blue? Or is it just like with our random batch of marbles, that's what we happen to get. So we don't really know, okay? And, you know, we're gonna assume there's gonna be some random variation. Um, and certainly, you know, um, our, our, our pouches exhibit some variation, but it's nothing that's like so alarming that, um, that we're gonna doubt the binomial process, right? Obviously, if we get a marble of like, uh, you know, a pouch where all 50 marbles or something are all red, then that would ca cause doubt on, um, cause us to doubt the binomial process. But we'll, we'll just say, you know, there's, while there's variation, there's nothing that causes us to doubt the, uh, the binomial process. Okay, so, so, you know, for example, we have, you know, one pouch from factory A that has 20 marbles and 70% are red, okay? And another uh, pouch has 55% red. And these are not that unusual of, a, of, of an outcome. Okay, so, so here we've just summarized all of our training data here. Does this so far make sense as, as kind of the scenario that we've got? Okay. And so now we're gonna open up, we open up our test case, okay? We open up our test case and we, we dump out the marbles. There's 20 marbles, tw 10 of them are red, okay? Which means in our, in our training uh, test case, 50, uh, we have a proportion that's 50% red, 50% red, okay? And so what we wanna do is we wanna calculate this first term, the likelihood, okay? So we go back to this thing, right? We've got this part's the likelihood, this part's the prior, this part's the marginal, okay? So the likelihood is um, what is the probability of observing the data we have if we assumed the new observation belonged to a specific class, right? So what's the probability that a bag of 20 marbles ends up being 50% red if it came from factory A? What's the probability that a bag of 20 marbles ends up being 50% red if it came from factory B? What's the probability that, um, that the, the bag ends up 50% red if it came from factory C, okay? So factory A, you know, according to our training data, according to our training data, 60% of factory A is red, 50% from factory B is red, and 40% from factory C is red, okay? So we do our calculations, and we would do, um, using the binomial probability, we would do 20 choose 10. For factory A, we do 60% to the 10th power times 40% to the 10th power. We need 10 red marbles at 0.6 each and 10 blue marbles at 0.4 each. And that amount multiplies out to be 0.117. From factory B, we have 20 choose 10, 0.5, which is probability of red to the 10th power, 0.5, which is the probability of blue to the 10th power, and we get 0.176. And from factory C, we do the calculations, we get 0.117 as well, okay? So based on the likelihoods only, factory B has the highest likelihood, okay? Factory, and that makes sense because our bag is 50% red. And factory B, according to our training data, is also 50% red. So that, that one makes sense to be the most likely. Okay, whereas fit, uh, factory A is a little bit less likely because factory A came out 60% red in our training data. And factory C is a little bit less likely because factory C was 40% red in our training data, okay? They're not impossible, but they have slightly lower likelihoods. Okay, so that's the likelihood part. But that's not the only part that we're, we're using we also want to incorporate the other aspect, which is uh, kind of the prior probability, which is if I didn't open up the bag, if I didn't count the marbles inside, what would I have guessed? What, what probabilities would I have um, guessed? Well, according to our training data, out of the 24 bags, 12 of them came from factory A, right? So, 
um, you know, if we assume that kind of these same filling proportions applied, we would guess that, you know, maybe factory A is responsible for half of all kind of, um, you know, marble production or something. Maybe it's a bigger factory or something. And so it might be reasonable to say that, you know, maybe factory A is going to produce um, bags at 50% probability. And from factory B, um, six out of 24 came from factory B. So that's going to be 25%. And six out of twenty-four came from factory C, which is twenty-five percent. Okay, and so if I if I hadn't opened the bag, I would have guessed that um, my bag came from factory A with probability 0.5, or my bag came from probability uh, factory B with probability 0.25, or my bag came from probability C with probability 0.25. Okay, is that okay as far as the prior probabilities go? Getting 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0 0.25. And I also just want to make sure that these likelihood numbers also make sense as far as where they came from. Okay. All right. So those are that's my likelihood and that's my prior probability. And those make up my numerator. Okay. So the numerator over here is, you know, the likelihood of getting the data we have observed if we assumed it came from a certain factory or certain class multiplied by kind of the prior probability that it came from my class if I didn't look at the data at all, okay? If I multiply those two things, that gives me my numerator. So I'm gonna calculate, I'm gonna multiply these numbers together to get my numerators, okay? So uh, my, this value is 0.117 for factory A, my likelihood for factory A is 0.117, and my prior probability for factory A was 0.5, so I multiply those two numbers together and I get 0 0.0585, okay? For class B or factory B, I take my likelihood, which was higher at 0.176, and I multiply it by kind of the probability that you know a random bag came from um, factory B and that was 0.25. So I multiply those two numbers together and get 0 0.044. And then for factory C, I take the likelihood, which was 0.117, and I multiply it by uh, the prior probability that it came from factory C, which is 0.25. I multiply those two together and I get 0.029, okay? So this is gonna be the numerator for factory A, the numerator for factory B, the numerator for factory C, okay? All right, and so for my denominator, I'm going to just add up the numerator across all three classes, across all three factories. So the marginal probability is the probability of observing the values in X nu, in our case, 10 red and 10 blue um, in a bag of 20 marbles, um, regardless of class label. Did it come from factory A, B, or C? We're, gonna, we're just gonna add up the numerator across all three things, okay? And that way, um, when you take the numerator and divide by the denominator, everything's gonna add up to one when you kind of calculate these total probabilities. So these are these, the numerator values that I have. I'm gonna add those three values up and I get 0 0.1319, 0 0.132. That's gonna form my denominator. Okay. And so now I'm just take my numerator value and I divide by the total denominator, okay? So the numerator here is 0 0.0585, and I'm gonna divide by the denominator 0 0.1319, okay? 0 0.0585 divided by 0 0.1319, and I get 0 0.444, right? And again, this is, you know, symbolically, we can write all of this out. The probability that the bag came from factory A, that the class is A, given the data in the bag that X knew, there are 10 red marbles out of 20 marbles total. And all of the training data comes out like this, okay? So it's the probability of getting 10 red based on the training data, class A has P equal to 0.6, multiplied by the probability that it came from factory A, okay, according to our training data. And so this is gonna give me, you know, 20 choose 10.6 to the 10.4 to the 10, that's the binomial probability. And this 0.6 comes from the training data probability that came from factory A is 12 out of 24.5, okay? And then we did that across all numerators to get this denominator of 0.1319, which is around 44%. I do the same thing for class B and class C, and I get something around 33% and around something around 22%, okay? 
Okay, and so the um, so we get our posterior probabilities. The 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 final kind of Bayes probabilities that we get is if your bag is ten red and ten blue, we would say it's a forty four percent probability that it came from A, thirty three percent that it came from factory B, and twenty two percent probability that it came from factory C. Okay, which is which is interesting. Okay, because our test case is 50% red. And if we were to base, based on just the factory proportions that we've observed in our training data, we would have guessed factory B because factory B was 50% red, factory A was 60% red, and factory C was 40% red. So based on just the training data, we would probably guessed factory B alone because my bag, or uh, based on the training data alone, my bag was 50% red, and that matched factory B, which was 50% red. But if we take into account that, you know, maybe factory A produces more bags than factory B, then that adjusts things. And we end up guessing factory A um, has a slightly higher probability just because it um, produces um, more bags, right? Okay. And so, you know, when you take everything into account, it shows that, you know, well, getting 50% red from a factory where the true percent true proportion is 60% is not all that unlikely. And when you combine that with the prior probabilities that factory A produces more bags, factory A ends up being the most probable class. Okay. Um, in this example that we've done, we've made a, a lot of major assumptions, okay? All right. And so a couple major assumptions were that the um, basically the MLE estimates for our proportions um, uh, apply to the factories. Okay, so um, so you know we said well in my training data, sixty percent of the marbles are red, and therefore I'm assuming factory A is sixty percent red, and uh, and we assumed you know in my training data, fifty percent of the marbles from factory B were red, therefore I'm assuming factory B. Is fifty percent red? Okay, that that's a pretty strong assumption, um, and and if you knew more about the process, maybe you would um, you would fix that. Okay, and the other big assumption that we're making is we said, well, you know, in my training data, half of my bags came from factory A, so therefore I'm assuming in kind of the global manufacturing process that factory A is produces you know half of all marbles, and we're saying you know in my in my training data, one fourth of the bags came from factory B. So I'm assuming in the global manufacturing process that factory B outputs one fourth of their marbles. Again, that's a major assumption. We could be wrong. If you knew more about the manufacturing process, like if you knew somebody who works at the marble factory and they say, oh no, you know what? All three factories produce the same amount of bags um, or same amount of marbles, then you would probably change your um, random bag probability uh, the prior probability to just one third. You can say, well, you know, I know actually that all three factories produce have the same output, and therefore, you know, the probability is one third. And so, um, so you know, obviously, the more you know about the process, the better you can make your model. Um, otherwise, you have to just make assumptions about the manufacturing process, okay, or or whatever process is producing your data, okay. Um, I just want to kind of show you what happens if you changed um, the outcomes, right? So let's say um, in our test case, we didn't have 10 red and 10 blue. What if we had um, six red, okay? So in our bag, only 30% are red, okay? Well, if you do that, then your likelihoods will change, okay? Your likelihood is now going to be 20 to 6, and it's going to be 0.6 to the sixth power and times 0.4 to the 14th power. Okay. And, and if you do these calculations, even if you take into account the prior probabilities, you know, factory A being responsible for half of all marble manufacturing, okay, factory C is going to be end up being the most probable because um, it's, it's reasonable. For factory C, which has a 40% red output to produce a bag where only 30% is red, whereas it's a lot harder or a lot um, less probable 
for factory A, which has 60% red output, to produce a bag where only 30% is red. Okay, I mean, it's not impossible, but it's a lot more improbable. And so when you do that and you um, calculate kind of the numerators and you divide by the denominators, factory C ends up being the most probable at around 73%, and factory A becomes the least probable with around 6% probability. Okay, and factory B ends up somewhere in between. Okay, even though prior, you know, in, in your training data, pr prior to looking at anything else, factory A, you know, we're still assuming factory A outputs 50% and factory C outputs only one fourth of the data, or one fourth of the marbles, 25%. But because of the likelihood of your data, um, you know, factory C ends up being the most probable. Okay. I hope that makes sense as far as what's happening. So this is how the Bayes classifier works as far as, you know, just this simple case with red and blue marbles. Okay. And so again, um, so yeah, this just kind of explains it a little bit further. We can see the likelihood of getting only six red out of 20 marbles is very low if it came from factory A, okay? On the other hand, getting six red is not unlikely if it comes from factory C, where the proportion is assumed to be 40% red, okay? And so despite our prior probability that only one fourth of bags come from factory C, the observed data makes factory C the most probable class assignment. Okay, let me go ahead and give you your second view quiz answer, which is the letter A, letter A as an apple. Second view quiz answer is the letter A as an apple. Okay. All right. Um, so let's expand this um, and generalize to, you know, something a little bit more than just um, some binomial situation with red and blue marbles or things like that. And we'll apply it to kind of a mixture of multivariate Gaussian distributions. So we just kind of introduced or showed you, reviewed the uh, multivariate Gaussian or multivariate normal distribution on Friday. Uh, once again, this is kind of the P, this is the PDF of the multivariate normal distribution where you have a vector, you've got some D dimensional vector X, okay? And your mu is some D dimensional um, vector of means. And sigma is a d by d, you know, kind of variance covariance matrix uh, for the x x variables, right? And you know, keeping in mind that if the off diagonal elements are zero, then they're independent. Um, otherwise, you have some kind of covariance. There is a package in R that generates uh, data from a multivariate normal, uh, and that's uh, library MVT norm. Okay, so you can do uh, library multivariate normal. And here I'm going to generate um, data from three multivariate normal distributions, okay? So distribution A, um, we're gonna generate um, two-dimensional multivariate normal data, okay? So distribution A has a center at two comma three, and it has a diagonal uh, matrix it has more variance. Uh, the variance for um, X1 is three, and the variance for X2 is only one, and there's no covariance, okay? So you got a three, zero, zero, one, or three, zero, zero, one uh, sigma matrix. I'm gonna generate 30 random points from there. Um, distribution B is centered at the origin zero, zero, and it has uh, the identity matrix as its covariance matrix, right? So one, zero, zero, one, um, X1 and X2 are independent, okay? And that's gonna be distribution B. And distribution C is centered at two, negative two, okay? And it has some covariance here, okay? So it's um, data, it goes three, 2.5, 2.53. All right, so far so good? Okay, and so um, this is just uh, the code to kind of plot it and the ellipses I'm trying to draw like kind of plots of what, what this would look like, right? And so this, these ellipses represent the, the generating um, kind of the contour lines of the multivariate normal distributions that generate the data, okay? 
Um, and so this one is centered at uh, two, three, I believe. This first one has a center at two, three, and it has more variance in the x1 direction than the x1, uh, x2 direction. This one is centered at zero, zero, and it has equal variance in the x1 and x2 direction. And this one's centered at two, negative two, and um, it has uh, equal variance in the x1 and x2 directions, but it has um, covariance between x1 and x2. And so these ellipses you know, kind of form this diagonal. Uh, the uh, major and minor axes of the ellipse um, are not um, parallel to the uh, x1 and x2 axes. OK, so this is, uh, and these dots represent the randomly generated data coming from uh, these distributions, OK? So this is what we have. OK, and what we want to do now is um, we want to be able to say, you know, if we observe a new observation at, say, here or here or here or whatever, we want to be able to classify it as, is it, you know, does it come from population A, which is red, population B, which is blue, or population C, which is green. Okay. Now, in this case, we generated the data ourselves. So we know the population mean and population variance covariance matrix, matri uh, variance covariance matrices. We know those population values, but we're going to have to pretend like we don't know them. And we're going to have to estimate what those mean and variances are based on the observed data. Okay. And so if we wanted to estimate the mean, from our observed data, we just take the mean of our observed data. We just add up our x values and divide by n, okay? And this is going to be a, you know, a, a vector. And so you can just kind of take the column means of your x data and stuff like that. And then if you wanted to calculate the um, maximum likelihood estimate for the variance, basically it's going to just be kind of the mean squared error, right? You can also, um, if you wanted to, you could choose to use the sample variance, okay? The sample variance you would divide by one over n, n minus one. So that, that's an option, right? So you can, uh, depending on what you decide to do, you can use either the sample variance and, you know, basically have the variance but divide by n minus one or the maximum likelihood, you know, you divide by n. Um, but, um, so, so that's what that that's what we're going to end up doing. We're going to use rather than the maximum likelihood estimate, which is kind of the um, mean squared error. We're going to just go ahead and use the uh, the sample variance where we divide by n minus one. Um, uh, so, so that's what we'll do. Okay. And so you can get the sample variance by just kind of taking your x matrix and just asking for variance, right? So you just put in uh, put it in R and you ask for the variance and things like that. Okay. And so we get we get estimates, right? And so we know in the um, generating data, the, uh, the variance matrix here uh, is 3001. And when we estimate it based on our sample of data, we don't get 3001, we get 3, 2.980, negative 0 0.188, and not one, but 1 1.2 basically, okay? And here, this is supposed to be the identity 1001, and we're getting something a little bit off from that. And here, this is supposed to be I think three, 2.5, 2.53, okay? And just our sample of data happens to have a lot less variance than that, okay? That's just what happened when we generate random values. Okay, so anyway, using those, uh, the estimated means and the estimated variances, this is kind of what the generating distributions would look like, okay? And so we can see these things, these ellipses, like if we said, what would a, a multivariate normal distribution look like if it was centered at the mean of our data and had the variance matrix based on our data, the, the ellipses would look like this, okay? And so you can see, you know, if I compare this versus um, the known ones, we can see the ones that are estimated from our, uh, our data, you know, are, are centered more closely to, to the data, right? So, so um, like, the center of this looks like the center of our blue dots, whereas the true center is at the origin zero zero, which is you know a little bit off from what what we have, right? So these the in in black we have the known contours that we use to generate our data, whereas uh, these are just estimated from um, from the sample of data that we have. Okay, but anyway, uh, so we're going to go ahead and use 
our sample uh, estimated um, variance and estimated means from our sample in order to do our um, Bayes classifier calculations. Okay, so let's say I have a test case, a test case at zero, zero. And the question is, okay, based on the sample of my data, the, the sample of data that I have and kind of my estimated distributions, should I classify this as red, blue, or green? Okay, and I think it's very obvious in this test case, we should classify it as blue. Okay, but let's let's just see if this this lines up accordingly, right? So we want to say, well, what is the likelihood of generating a data point where the coordinate is zero zero if it came from the red distribution, right? That's what that's what this likelihood is. What's the likelihood of getting zero zero if it came from the red distribution, multiplied by the prob prior probability that it came from red divided by the marginal probability of getting zero zero. Then we do the same thing for blue. We say, what's the probability of getting zero, zero if it came from the blue distribution? And then we do it for green. What's the probability of getting zero, zero if it came from the green distribution? That's what, that's this question. What's the probability of getting X new, which is zero, zero, if it came from distribution, you know, red, blue, or green? Oh, and sorry, I guess, um, I guess that's that. That's all I have for right now, and we're going to continue this on um, on Wednesday, okay? Where I have a have a little bit more, where we'll, we'll actually go through the calculations here, okay? Um, but yeah, so so from from this example, I think it's going to be clear that we should get blue, okay? But we're going to go through the calculations, and and we're going to use the multivariate normal PDF to get this probability. What's the probability of getting zero zero? If it came from a distribution where this uh, the the center is whatever is calculated this to be, which is uh, if the center is you know 0.3 negative 0.1, what's the probability of getting zero zero if it comes from a distribution where the center is 2.2 and 2.8? What's the probability of getting zero zero if the center comes from a distribution where the center is 2.25 and negative 1.9? Okay, and so so that's where we're going to end up. And we're going to use that to calculate our likelihoods. We'll also include kind of all of our prior data to get our prior probabilities, which in our case, they're equally represented. So they're all going to be one thirds. And then we're going to combine them to get um, the numerators. We'll add them up to get our uh, marginal probabilities. OK, but we'll, uh, we'll pause here for now. And, uh, and we'll finish the, uh, the calculations on Wednesday uh, as far as that goes um, for, for calculating out the um, the um, Bayes classifier probabilities there. Okay, so we'll um, we'll pause here and um, and we'll wrap it. We'll call it a day for now. Let me give you your last view quiz answer for today. Last view quiz answer is B, B as in bear. B as in bear is your going to be your last view quiz answer for today. Okay, so we'll um, we'll end here and uh, we'll see you guys on Wednesday to. Uh, wrap up this example for the uh, the base classifier. All right, have a good night.